University of Ottawa Heart Institute has access to many cardiac imaging options and two dedicated cardiac PET CT scanners. We're here to tell you why Ottawa Heart is exploring the boundaries of SPECT nuclear cardiology, one of the most common nuclear medicine applications. Why should institutions continue to push the boundaries of SPECT nuclear cardiology? There are a number of options available to assess myocardial blood flow. Some of these options are explored in this module, along with why SPECT myocardial blood flow presents a significant clinical opportunity for improved cardiac management. Presently, myocardial blood flow reserve can be measured non-invasively with several techniques, of which PET is the most validated and widely accepted. MR perfusion using T1-weighted CMR imaging of myocardial first-pass enhancement in a bolus of gadolinium is currently being assessed in the research setting. It is hindered, however, by cost, availability, and the requirement for complex mathematical modeling, as well as by the standardization of protocols, pulse sequences, and models. FFR, or fractional flow reserve, relies on the ratio of flow in the stenotic artery to flow in the same artery in the theoretical absence of stenosis. This invasive method may be more costly and assesses only discrete epicardial stenoses. When significant microvascular disease is present, distal pressures can be overestimated, leading to falsely elevated FFR readings. Coronary CT angiography-derived FFR can identify hemodynamically significant coronary artery disease with an overall per-vessel accuracy of 75% compared to invasive FFR. The technique can be quite expensive, however, owing in part to the proprietary software required for reliable analysis. PET myocardial perfusion imaging is considered the non-invasive gold standard for the assessment of myocardial blood flow. However, there are several limitations to uh, PET imaging. One is cost, and many of us who practice recognize that the cost of PET is often double that of SPECT imaging. Identifying novel techniques at a lower cost would be of huge benefit to medical care and healthcare economics. We believe with the addition of myocardial blood flow and measurements of myocardial blood flow reserve, we can actually increase the accuracy of SPECT imaging. SPECT is a very commonly available modality, less expensive than that of PET. PET imaging, we recognize, requires much more infrastructure than SPECT imaging. Practicing in an academic center, we have the benefit of having access to both PET and SPECT cameras but we recognize that many institutions around the world do not have ready access to PET. For those of us who read PET images, we recognize the incremental value of having access to myocardial blood flow reserve data. It honestly, in my mind, increases diagnostic certainty when we're interpreting images. If we can improve diagnostic certainty with SPECT images, I think that we would improve upon patient diagnosis. So if you can implement this technique widely, I think we can improve upon diagnostic certainty when we're interpreting images. And if we can find or implement new technologies in the existing fleet of SPECT cameras, we think we'd be doing the world uh, a better good. Nuclear cardiology remains one of the leading nuclear medicine applications, and perfusion imaging is one aspect of its utility. There are opportunities to better understand the role and validity of myocardial blood flow in SPECT imaging and how this will shape the future of cardiac imaging. In the next module, Dr. Terence Ruddy and Dr. Glenn Wells will review the clinical progress made in the space of SPECT myocardial blood flow and will explain how these novel technologies address the clinical gap that currently exists in nuclear cardiology.